party. He made it up. weird because and everybody like noticed, and then he was just like, "Are you high?" And I was like, "No, <laughs> why'd you do that?" I got mad. You brought it to everybody's <laughs> oh, attention. And I was like, "That's the last thing you want." Hypothetically, <laughs> hypothetically, <laughs> hypothetically, he would have then been very quiet. I feel like nothing happened this week. The All Star game happened yeah. for basketball. It's pretty good I, start I, to finish. I repeat myself. I feel like nothing happened this week. <laughs> I enjoyed Very the game. Accurate, Steph went off for fifty fucking plus points and was the All Star MVP. They changed the trophy. They changed a lot. Um, That's a tribute to Kobe. Kobe yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice trophy. It's I don't know if it's I doubt it's glass. Something else, I'm sure, but. If it is glass, it's still really nice looking. Ruby and crystal. Oh. I feel like if it was glass, it'd be. I don't know. Oh, I just made that up. Yeah, uh, I'm sure it's something outside of glass. I feel like the first half was works. kind of boring, but it picked up towards the end because they have like uh, they're doing a points goal now, so like yeah, you have to hit like 163 points, and so you know towards the last half of the fourth quarter, they actually start playing ball and getting serious and digging up and. Do whatever I figured, bit. but <clears throat> I can only take a quarter and a half of it. And I was just like, I'm just gonna play Pokemon Unite. It was I pretty good. Sex tape. I was Pokemon Unite, enjoying huh? it. Yeah, it's super fun. Um, it's just like League of Legends, uh, Fisher Price. Fisher Price presents. I don't know why you just don't play League. It's super fun. Because it's too much, and I don't care. How is it? I literally Pokemon Go. I pick my Pokemon. I attack with my Pokemon. So I it's score. literally the same thing like That's you just it. said. But it's I don't like, have to learn about items. Numbers, I don't have to worry about builds. I don't have to worry about what champion I want to pick. I don't have to worry about roles. Pokemon is you pick a Pokemon and you beat the shit out of other Pokemon. Also a mobile game. Not like... I think you can play it on PC. Are you sure? Uh, no, you can't. Mm. I like downloaded some sketchy third party um app for my computer that lets me play mobile games on my computer mm. isn't it a coming it's coming to yeah. pc though isn't it it might be i think i saw something about that does nintendo have anything on pc right now Fuck if probably i know probably not probably not i wouldn't think so they're mad stingy with their shit. they are just, i'm about to buy a also. switch just to play fucking um ooh, i'm playing strikers the soccer game. Ooh, looks I'm super excited. Good for as strikers. fuck. Did you play mm -mm. the one on the Wii? Mm -mm. Bruh, that game was so fucking fun. Striker. I want to. I want to get Strikers. Um, and then the other game that came out a while ago, the Super Mario Golf, looks super fucking fun. Yeah, they're coming out with um, yeah. Super Smash Sports, like they did Wii Sports, or not Super Smash Nintendo Switch Sports. That's what they're calling it. It's kind of a yeah. lame name. It doesn't roll off the tongue like Wii Sports does, but. Um, they're supposed to have like a bunch of the classic games like bowling and golf and a couple other things as well. I feel like Switch Sports sounds Switch just as good as Wii Sports. But when you say Nintendo Sports. Switch Sports, it mm. definitely doesn't run. Like if you said Nintendo Wii Sports, it would definitely be clunkier than just saying Wii Sports. Well, see, but like people that I'd seen reviews of like people reviewing, I guess, the, the trailer for it and they're calling it Nintendo Switch Sports. So it just stuck in my head. Like, I can't think of anybody that was like, Nintendo Wii Sports, you know? Everybody called it just Wii Sports, so. And Wii Sports still sounds better than Switch Sports, in my opinion. But Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the variance of the sounding of good between Switch Sports and Wii Sports is much smaller than Wii Sports versus You're Nintendo Switch. True. Solid. It's rude. Outside of, like, a Game Boy, I think the only Nintendo, like, console I've owned is uh, N64. Yeah, I had an N64. I had an NES. I had all of the N64 um, and prior to. And then the Game Boys, I only got to the Advance. I never got to the folding one. I got the Advance SP. SP? The SP yeah. was the I shit. I only got, got to, to like, like the, the second gym, gym Game Boy, where it wasn't the big green motherfucker. The Game Boy Color? 
Oh, it's just a Game Boy then. <laughs> yeah, it's a Game Boy then Game Boy Color. Yeah, I had a Game Boy, a Game well, Boy Color. It's like it was the second gen of just the regular Game Boy. Game Boy Advance. Was, like the big ass clunky gray and purple one. I remember busting I think you got, my like a ass. downgraded Game Boy Color. Yeah. I busted my ass for a Game Boy Advance. Like my dad, I think, Facts. owned a restaurant at the time and I was waiting tables and it was like an old people restaurant and it was just weird, bro. I had to deal with like a bunch of old fuckers, but I had I, I got tips and quarters. I collected it was like seventy bucks or something like that at the time. And I went I went to GameStop, I bought my fucking Game Boy Advance and it came with like this blue watch that had a fighting game on it. The shit. <clears throat> I ax I fucked up my chance of getting a Game Boy Advance. My uncle took me to Walmart and then just was like, Which one do you want? I was like, What? And it was a Game Boy Color and a Game Boy Advance. No shot, you picked a color. I I do I didn't I wasn't into video games. I was like four. I wasn't into video games yet. So oh, like maybe four, four or five. Yeah. So I was yeah. Understandable. Yeah, I wasn't into video games. So like she was like the lady who had no idea what she's talking about. She's like, this is the newer one and this is the cheaper one. And then I'm pretty sure if I, my uncle was just like, what about this one? The cheaper one. You like that one? And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll take it. But yeah, I fucked up the chance of getting a, a Game Boy Advance. And then, you know, <clears throat> going to school later and all the kids are playing like Bomberman on their advance. And I just want to play, but I can't because I have a Game Boy Color. You're like, no, <laughs> so- but I've got yellow. Look, Pikachu <laughs> walks behind me. <laughs> I think enough kids in my neighborhood had them for me to like, I guess, get that itch scratched every now and then. But I wasn't ever like super into handheld gaming. I think until like the PSP came out. I never I had one of those. I wasn't ever PSP or either. But... I had a PSP and I lost it for two weeks. Like it was like a, a, a several months after I had it, and I lost it for two weeks. And then, like a month later, I found it and it was in like a laundry hamper, like under clothes. And I turned it on and the screen was fucked. I remember the first time I played it, it was my cousin's like in the backseat while he was driving. And I was playing some Marvel game. I don't I think it was like some sort of fighting game, but I don't remember exactly which one it was. And I remember moving the uh like the joystick down or whatever, and I was terrified because I like with the way it was textured, I thought it was a speaker, and I thought I just broke his PSP, and I was just like just turned it off and put it back in the case. It just like yeah. sat there awkwardly. The PSPs were ahead of their time, I think. Yeah, they were. Yeah. I remember for NBA Live, bro. Orange, so bro. Good. Shit. True. Also <laughs> true. Yeah, one hundred percent. Come this on. Before we all had smartphones. Yeah. Speak for yourself. Yeah, probably speak for yourself as well. I think I had an I iPhone. Didn't have a smartphone. I had the original. Until... My buddy worked at a movie theater at the time. He worked at Movie Sixteen. Uh, Michael Sordia. I think he actually listens to the podcast. So shout out Michael Sordia. What's up? How's uh, hey, shout out. Alabama, Oklahoma, whatever Alabama, other, other fucking state you moved to. Whatever. Country, um, but he worked in a movie theater at the time, and it was right after the first iPhone came out. So right, Steve Jobs gets up on the stage, and he pulls it up, and then he's like, Whoosh, and everyone's like, because, ah! <laughs> you know, it was never, you'd never be able to touch screen for it. Like, that shit was revolutionary it's it's crazy to like go back and watch that video now and be like oh how far we've come <laughs> like but i mean it was i mean if you really think about it it was it wasn't like a first in a feature it was like a first in a design which is completely different right like it was the first touch screen phone so literally just, every other touch screen phone is just like a copy of that yeah uh, i think like the closest thing to it before that was like maybe a palm pilot and it wasn't touchscreen but you had to use the stylus. Stylus. you had yeah. to use a stylus because it was the uh, the elect the electromagnetism between the stylus and the screen is what interacted right versus like the thermodynamic touch of the screen that was implemented into the first original iphone right and it had a lot of problems obviously right so like if your pocket was like hot it would like unlock and stuff because they didn't quite um dial in thermodynamics of the screen until like way later and then in earlier versions of the the phone i don't know if any of y'all ever had earlier versions of the phone but they didn't they didn't implement the sensor that i don't know if you even know this but when you hold your phone up to your face yeah it, was it, it turns off it it turns it off the touch screen <clears throat> right so it would it, it didn't have that sensor i want to say until the 3g or even the 4 
God Maybe. forbid you're on the fucking phone for over 30 minutes. Oh yeah, that bitch got hot as fuck. Hot as hell, bro. Well, th- and then like if 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 you pivoted right and it, it hit your face, you would hang up on people constantly, yeah, constantly or you would yeah. mute, you would hit the mute button with your cheekbone yeah. or go on to speaker in the middle of a conversation. Um, yeah, we've come crazy far, but digressing to I, the uh, origins of the story. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say peak mobile gaming was definitely like the first couple of generations of iPhones in my like, touch grind and shit like that. Doodle jump. Shit was angry birds. We're not going to throw out the original angry birds for sure. The Birds. amount of hours, There's I the, mean, Clash of Clans, I still, I'm like eight years into Clash of Clans. That was like back when Unblock Your Car game. Words with Friends was popping. The coolest thing, the first really cool app that I think I ever got, which is going to seem like so benign now, but uh, there was two. There was two that were really fucking cool that I got. There was one that was a beer stein. And when you lifted up your phone, the gyroscope would empty the beer. And then um, the candle or and or lighter. I can't remember if it was a Zippo or a candle. It was a and Zippo. You, Zippo. You'd touch the screen and it would, it would light up. And like yeah. you, you would all go into a dark room and you'd pull up the app and you did the fucking Zippo. And like, you're like, oh, look, it's a, it's a lighter. <laughs> and we can see. But it was just so dumb. Like, the apps were so simple back then. It was crazy. Um, but they were, I they, they were mind-blowing. Like, you would lift up that phone and the beard and you... It was baffling i literally haven't played a mobile game in years i play mobile games like, all i have time. a few downloaded on my phone but not a sponsor but um lord of the rings region at war or realm at war just dropped which is like a strategy based uh yeah. time lapse building game yes. that you might be interested in just in the the general lore sense of the game yeah i think tanner shout out tanner i know you listen he had hit me up about it on like snapchat like not too long ago and asked me if i played it or snapchat not. that's wild throwback speaking of to... snapchat that was the first app that i actually liked but it wasn't snapchat it was an app where you took a picture and it would randomly send it to somebody i think and i remember you... that app but before we get into yeah, like a cra- i feel like we could pretty do a pretty good deep dive on apps like through the years i want to finish the story because uh I hate when people on a podcast branch off and you're like waiting for the end of the story and you don't get it till like 45 minutes later, right? So the story behind me getting the first iPhone, right, was I was a senior in high school. Michael Studio is working at the movie theater, right? And this is like six months after it dropped. So it's super fresh, right? And these were like $1,000 back then, right? They, they like, they like dipped and went back up, right? So they were like $1,000. And then they got them down to like the three and four hundreds, and now they've just gone back up to like a thousand, eleven hundred, fourteen hundred dollars or whatever. Um, but you know, just as a progression, they got cheaper for a while, and so like a thousand dollars back then for a phone was like unheard of. Like it was ten times more expensive than any other phone. Like if you weren't getting your phone free, like with your two year upgrade, like you're crazy, right? Not Kyle sidelining himself in his own story. <laughs> Well, I just wanted to, I wanted to have the impact of how much the value of the phone was, right? So Michael Sordia finds one, right? I guess it did a pocket slip because you're not used to having a phone that bulky because it was kind of bigger uh, like than other phones at the time. Because for a while, the big thing about phones was the smallest phone possible. Facts. Right? That was a big yeah. thing for a while, too. Um, and so, so those were like pretty big. And but he found it when he was cleaning up the theater, right? You know, he was a, doing cleaning crew shit, you know, where 18 year olds working bum jobs. And he got it, and I was like, he wasn't big into phones. Like, he didn't really care. And I was like, he waited for a little bit to see if anybody claimed it, and then he didn't. And then I bought it off him for, like, 700 bucks or something. And then I had the new iPhone. And this was back before, like, they did, like, all the, like, encryption and theft recovery. Like, if you lost your phone back then, you were just fucked. Anybody could get in it, throw a SIM card in it, and it was there. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, That's more recent anyway. Like, like it's been, like, the the past three years, yeah. Which is crazy to think that it took them that long to do that. Minus the movie theater bit. That's how my sister got a Nintendo DS. Uh, she went to the grocery store with my mom, found it in the shopping cart. And I remember being super pissed because like, I refused to go that day to the grocery store <laughs> with my mom. And my sister was a bitch about it and didn't let me play it for a while. But eventually I got it. You chose poorly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I just overall Nintendo just hasn't like I liked the GameCube and a lot of the games on the GameCube, but prior to other than like the GameCube and the N sixty four, I just don't really give a shit about uh, Nintendo. Hopefully, 
You said? You cut out like halfway through your word. Oh, I said how poorly. Oh. Oh, how poorly. Gotcha. Solid. Oh. Uh, I, the way I view Nintendo is like it's just there. Like the Game Boot, GameCube had bangers. Facts. And I played the GameCube a lot. Uh, the Wii had Wii Sports. Facts. And WarioWare. And that's about it. But I feel like I'm in the point like, six- one percent in the Nintendo gang. I had a Dreamcast. Yeah, I, was a, I feel like that's a genuinely super underrated. Like one hundred percent, there was a fighting game on there that, for the time, the graphics were unparalleled. It was one of the first games I think ever that had interactive environments. Right, so you would be on a stage and you would do a power move, and it would blow them through the wall. Like Mortal Kombat does it all the time now, but then so you like would Soul Calibur then and transfer. Did it in Mortal Kombat too? Like you would uppercut somebody and they would go up through the wall to another like another well, like a street or something. No, like, no, but I'm not talking just like blowing someone through the wall. Like if you did a move, like it would affect the environment, right? So like every time like someone like fell down, like. The environment would like break a little bit more. It's like think like mm-hmm. Battlefield when the like the first Battlefield or the what Battlefield three was the first one where you could like literally collapse a building, right? That was revolutionary as well, right? That shit was wild back in the day. Uh, that shit was there was a game, game changing Xbox that was like that too, but it was like a knockoff of Burnout. I think it was called like Full Auto Driver. Uh, you can like uh, no, no, I'm thinking of Drivers uh, a knockoff of GTA. Sorry. Yeah, like full auto, you could instead like burnouts. Your objective is to like fuck up as many cars as you can on the way to win. But this one, like your cars had like guns and shit, and you can like blow off the corners of walls to like or buildings to like take shortcuts. Interesting. Burnout, I feel like, is a super underrated car game. I love that game. Agreed. One of the craziest things about the Dreamcast is like I don't know if you're like Xbox original controllers. They had the dual slot right in the center on the top, and that's where you put, like, memory cards and shit. So Dreamcast had a similar thing, except one of the attachments to that, there was, like, a hole, like a square hole in the controller, and when you put the attachment in, you could buy one of the upgrades was, like, a smaller other game console. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but that shit is wild, right? I do. Like, you would put it in and play your game, and then content from that game would go on to it and so like when you're done you could pull it out and then play like it was smaller than a game boy right it was like a third of the size of a game boy but you could play right. like eight bit versions of that game while not at your dreamcast it was pretty crazy. i i do know that their dreamcast controller was the first controller to implement like the magnets and the thumbsticks like how the xbox elite controllers are to like prevent stick drift and shit which is like crazy that it went from dreamcast and it took like until like the pro console controllers to like implement that again yeah i feel like we've all had some uh, loose ass sticks i don't think i really incurred that problem until it's only them fucking real bad at it like my playstation oh yeah i don't have a switch though but my my ps4 like i think at one point i had like four fucking five controllers simply because three of them had fucking like the left was fucked. And it was the I would only fuck up ever. my controllers when I was playing NHL regularly. I don't switch that's controllers are so fucked. I was playing so. FIFA regularly. So I think that's why. Skill stick, bro. That's why we gotta chip in for a 3D printer and then just print your own fucking holder for the controllers. The switch controllers. 100% out of 3D printer. You can, get, you can get a you can get a 3D printer for like 150 bucks. But that Razor controller probably... Loki held up super solid. I put. I want to say I put like 500 hours into Fortnite on that controller, and I have zero. I still have that. Controller. I have zero six stick shift. The Razer Ultimate, maybe. No, I, might, I know the headset was Thresher. I don't know much about Razer. I don't, I don't even know the name of uh, Aside from the place, like I was pretty much Biker. an Xbox kid, like not the. Box, then the 360, and then I literally think the only reason I bought the Xbox like one or whatever was because I was at Entertain Mart and then I had it on, like, some sort of right, and I had it on like 
some sort of manager special and I got that and like the special edition of Skyrim for like maybe 260 bucks. Did you get the um, one or the one X? So there, there was like, I don't know if you know, but the there was X. the one and then there was the PS4 and then there was the one X and the PlayStation 4 Pro. I got the one X and then eventually I bought that PlayStation from you once you got the PS4 Pro. Yeah. Like that's the first PlayStation I had owned since like the PS2 because somebody forgot to give me a PS3 that I traded him a pool cue for. RIP. Now, my progression was super weird, though. I started with an Xbox, and I was a huge Xbox person. Uh, I I played both of the KOTORs on Xbox. I was super into the fucking Halos. And then... But I never played online because I couldn't convince my parents to pay for a subscription. And so when, like, the next Christmas came around, when the next gen came out, when it was the 360 and the PS3... Like, I had been left out of playing online with all my friends for so fucking long that I was I like, would, I'm going to get the PS3 because online is free. And I want to be right. social. And then you missed out I would on one of the down. greatest gaming social things. That was, yeah, ever. one of the best summers. For Xbox sure. 360, Xbox Live was legendary. I, I would bounce from a, like, three-month subscription to three-month subscription. And then occasionally I could I was able to talk my parents into buying me, like, a year subscription. Because I think at the time, the year subscription was only, like, 50 bucks or some shit. Your subscription is always cheaper. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, just comparative to... I guess I don't know what a year subscription for Xbox Live would cost now. I know, like, my brother got the new Xbox... And it came with a bunch of free shit just because of like the version he got. Like I'm able, he got the Game Pass for free. That also came with like the PC version. So like I'm I'm logged in on my computer with his Xbox account, and I like surprisingly enough, I can actually like play games while he's playing <clears> games <throat> like on his Xbox. I figured it would have kicked like one of us off. But. They're very like, um, I don't know. Like a lot of people who have Xboxes, like have kids, or you know, every, like it's a family console, so they're very like you can have as many people as you want, as long PlayStation. as they're on a different device. I don't remember if it was the yeah, 360 or the one, but I feel like honestly, Microsoft had a gold mine in voice tech that they did not capitalize in. That I feel like 100% whoever the chief engineer or the chief team is was on on Alexa. Um, like the the dots and the echoes and shit got that yeah. directly from Xbox because I remember I can't remember if it was Xbox the 360 on. or the one Xbox on <clears throat> Xbox off Xbox, yeah. Xbox YouTube Connect. Xbox yeah. right the 360 Connect. and it was super fucking yeah. cool and it worked relatively well yeah. and I've seen a bunch of Microsoft should have seen how popular that was I don't know how popular it was honestly but the Connect wasn't popular it didn't take great like take effect until their next console after that because that was built in yeah right. it, seemed it seemed like, like the, connect uh, didn't do well yeah it seemed like the connect was like xbox response to like the wii or something like that with like motion sensitive sensitive shit and like i i think the only game i because i only i didn't have a connect i think some of my neighbors did but the only thing that i can really remember is like being at either like best buy or walmart and playing a game on a raft where you have to like jump and like that's pretty much like the only movement you did in the whole game was just like Frogger, idly. Yeah, and then I know the dance game was like pretty popular for a bit. Yeah, just dance. Just dance is still popular. We just got Just Dance twenty two for the Switch for our daughter. Nice. It was, I, was Rock Band oh, exclusive or was that no? It was, no, it was both, both consoles. Which I put so many. It, well, well, Rock Band is not even the original. Guitar Hero was yeah. number one, and yeah, Guitar Hero I put. Yeah tons of time. Oh, yeah. Crazy amounts of time into. <clears throat> My cousin was like 10 times better than me at Guitar Hero and I'm so competitive, bro. So like for like months, I'm just kill that's the only game i played for a while and then like i'm finally like the next time i see my cousin because she lived or he lived in um north carolina so you don't come down in the summers so i saw him and i was like let's get this fucking through the fire and flames expert let's bro, go and no i still shot. got smoked and i'm like god damn what a song that game is probably what made me realize that i'm going to be like an average ass gamer for like ever because like even then like the hardest level i could do is just like the four buttons like you add that fifth button and i'm 
losing all, getting you booed off the stage. stage almost you got immediately. no dexterity in gotta, that pinky, gotta, huh? Gotta reach the pinky, reach buddy. The piano like a motherfucker. Nathan has no control of his pinky. <laughs> I played at the bottom where my pinky was always on blue. Yeah, and, and then you my index to go to red and blue. Green. You stretch the index, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Like all of my friends could play songs on like expert or whatever. It was just like. Were you up downer? I could never master up down, and that was up how down. you got to expert. I could up only down. do down, yeah. right? So even if it was like crazy fast, I'm just down, 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 down. I could never, pinch it. I could never do up down. What are you doing, Kyle? One more time. Okay, thanks. I just needed a replay. Yeah, I got you, got you, got you, got you. But Guitar Hero was such a game. I never got. Say again. Oh, I said, is that what you were doing when you were blowing guys through holes in walls? Oh, yeah. Solid. Nice. Throwback. 42 minutes later. All good, all good, all good. <laughs> no, but uh, Guitar Hero was... Uh, the barrier for entry was, like, much smaller. So, like, you get a Guitar Hero guitar and game pack for, like, 125 140 bucks, right? Was it? Because it, it was, like, the 70 No, the games themselves were 60 bro. Always. fifty nine ninety nine dollars since PS3. And now they're sixty nine ninety nine. Maybe it was... Maybe it was like a hundred. I feel like I definitely think it was cheaper it than one hundred and twenty and forty. Yeah, because I re the way I got Guitar Hero, which I didn't get it until the second one, was my little brother and another younger kid on my grandma's cul-de-sac played NBA Volume Two, and then if my brother won, we would win Guitar Hero Two with the game and the controller included, and then if he won, he won a brand new pair of shoes. Uh my brother won. That's Clutch. One of my first moments where I was like, gambling. This little nigga, man. That's, Google that's, says, <laughs> that's my brother. Google says it came out, the original release price was 70 bucks, 69 dollars Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was like 70, 80 bucks. Because yeah, he was getting a shoes. Yeah, like I don't think game yeah. companies realize they could charge stupid amounts of money for their game. And I think a new game back then was like 50 bucks. Yeah, for sure. It was like it was 50 until. The Pinocchio, it might have even been 40. Because I, I could remember like paying like. 40 bucks for resistance fall of man on playstation 3 I'm sure there were like different price points for like non triple a games or whatever. i think black ops is like 52 at the time but yeah because i remember like all the halos were 50 bucks uh i don't think they started becoming 60 until like probably the ps4 and xbox one yeah that sounds about right um, yeah because like that was a like 50 wasn't like too much to try to get my parents to buy like it was still rare that they were like okay we'll buy you a 50 dollars game and it was like usually go to gamestop and try to find the used games and hope that they're not like scratched all fuck because um, i don't want that fucking store credit when was the last time you even bought a physical copy of a game i don't even tell you um years uh no i think i bought the first spider-man game as a physical copy that that's still that, years yeah, that's still, yeah. literally still Easily years yeah. yeah like and especially now as like a pc gamer like i don't even have a disc slot <laughs> for my computer i think i bought mlb the show five years ago it was an amazing game oh yeah it's coming to pc apparently it's the, apparently it's the one on the street it's on a it's already on xbox and then the next copy is supposed to be on pc as well what i don't understand it's, especially uh, with or, microsoft is why don't the every game should be on pc right because so. even if you make it and then the developers only like i feel like the barrier is you have to code it for keyboard and mouse but i feel like you could easily drop a pc version of a game and make it controller only and make tons of fucking money like all of the coding has to be exactly the fucking same right if, yeah, if you make it a see, like Anybody so playing it will be the show playing that shit on mouse and keyboard. hundred percent. Let me just let me just swing my mouse for this. Ba Fuck out of here. Well, no from shot. what I understand, though, like so, in order for like a, a regular console game to be on PC, they have to port it over. And like when you port over a game, you're like the developers and people. They essentially also have to like go in and remaster the entire game. <clears throat> um, so it's like they essentially have to like build it. They just have a template to do it because like I've seen. I don't understand what you're saying. What do you mean? Can you, do you have any like more in depth? You just said like port it over and remaster. Uh, I, so like, I guess like the only example I can think of like right now is there are a lot of people uh, 
that are playing Halo Infinite that are like, well, why the fuck don't we get any of the old maps? Like, how fucking hard could it be to port over Lockout or, like, Beaver Creek or one of the million other, like, OG classic <clears throat> Halo game maps into this game? And it's like, the, the top comment was like, because it's not, like, just dragging and dropping it over here and it's there it's like they they literally have to essentially rebuild the map but that's like, what i'm talking about is, is they have like a bit of a template to like do but you're talking about bringing old content into new games i'm talking about like if you release a game like the show and it's a console exclusive that doesn't make sense to me because you could make so much more money even if you limited it right even if you built the whole game to 60 fps and controller only if you just drop that exact copy of the game and av available on one of the streaming services like epic games or fucking uh steam or whatever like even even if it's a small amount even if it's only only like five or ten percent more it feels like free money right but i think again it's just because like they essentially have to rebuild the game but see i don't like, that's what i don't understand like takes manpower i don't understand like, why like they would need to rebuild the game if they want to make it unlimited frame rates and keyboard accessible and shit like that yes obviously you're gonna have to build in stuff right. but uh, with the controller accessibility of pcs right now and there's there's literally gpus and cpus in consoles right that's they're in there right so it's not like they're using different mechanical parts the hardware of the systems is the same and so if it's a matter of frames and compatibility with mouse and keyboard i feel like they could just limit the frame rate and the controller input and just drop a game and make free money right well i think the porting thing is also why um playstation and xbox for a brief period of time i don't know if it was xbox but i know playstation still pretty much does it like that's why they stopped doing the backwards compatibility it's because like they have to rebuild like they have to they literally have to remake the game like and but just like or remaster the game and i guess that just takes too much manpower like you have to take people off of other projects to probably do that especially because i would imagine like they would want whoever worked on the game originally just to work on port it's like if the game they're porting is successful enough, that person is probably also working on something that's going to be... Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about re-releases, right? Re-releases obviously take time. Like, they're remastering The Witcher 3 right now, which... I mean, that's what essentially a port is, though. It's just a re-release on a different... Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about a re-release. I'm saying at the time a game drops, why not drop it on console and PC at all times? Right, okay. So you mean, like, build the game to where it's, like, ambidextrous? If whatever. you build it, they will come. I mean, it's honestly, it's probably just a money thing. Like, if they know that you can, if they can talk you into buying it on this thing. So if they did it, you, you could probably buy it twice and they might double them. I don't think you would buy it twice, but you would just, you're just opening it up, right? I, I'm, And this is, like, way different. Like, even five years ago, this conversation is completely different. Like, 100% different. But uh, Fortnite changed the game. Because the conversion rate of Fortnite that generated PC gamers is huge, right? Because everyone started to get fucked up by people on PC, right? And even if you play controller, if you built a PC, you could contend with mouse and keyboard players on a controller. You just needed the frame rate and the rendering, right? And, and the higher capacity of GPUs and CPUs that is available in a build right and so e even five years ago you're talking 2017 2016 th it'd be a poor plan right because not right. i would i would say the console gaming percentage was much higher oh yeah definitely oh, right sure. but I now i would so i would say it's say. even across all platforms if not bigger on pc and if you're if you do, you'd have to double count right because I obviously I have a PlayStation Pro sitting right here right so if there was a PlayStation obviously I don't have a PS5 but if I if I did have a PS5 and there's a PlayStation 5 exclusive right I would get it on the PlayStation 5 but if you release it on both I would buy it on my PC because of the compatibility right right I don't know it just seems like 
everybody's still living like it's 2016 in game development, right? The, the fact that there's exclusives on anything is wild. Yeah. Like, that's, like, the only exclusive that would, like, I don't even think it would make me buy it, but the only exclusive that PlayStation has that would, like, make me entertain the idea of buying a PS5 are, like, the Spider-Man games. Yeah. yeah 100%. And I feel like the exclusive is... that, I don't give a shit. Like, and same thing with, like, Xbox, the only prior to, like, I'm glad I have a PC because it's PC compatible, but the only exclusive they had that made me stay with xbox for so long was halo yeah which is now owned by sony right which is wild yeah yeah oh, sony owns bungie but, right yeah, yeah microsoft like, bought uh, but like, activision but and bungie, sony bought bungie yeah bungie doesn't even make halo anymore though a company i think destiny's still bungie uh, but yeah like Bunch, I, th- from, I think 343 consists of a bunch of people that like were maybe a little disgruntled with Bungie or something like that. What was the like, first light and dark game that was an X- Xbox exclusive? It's the first game that had like Path on console, the, to my knowledge. Fable? Huh? Fable? Yes. I want yeah, a, f- game, I want a, I want a, fa- a I want a new one. Fable, and I want a PC compatible. Making one. Are they? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't loved know Fable the... 1, 2, and 3. Endlessly. I... I liked the games a lot. Never played them. Number one, the most, <clears throat> but like realistically, the story was the same in every game. Every storyline, every campaign was something happened to your sister. Go figure out what. It's like this has like this world has so much, but th- to offer. But that's that, the like, story wasn't the main part of the life. game. It was like no, one hundred percent. Like the the main part of the game, in my opinion, is. The light, dark, and the interaction you get, right? Right. So it was the same with KOTOR. Like, KOTOR was the same way. And then, like, class build, I guess, in a, in a sense. I feel like it was one of the first games. KOTOR and Fable were some of the first games on Gen 2 consoles that were, like, you chose a path, so you were light or dark, and your environment was affected by that path. And then also you would yeah. you would build a class... Based on that, you would build your whole class around light or dark and how you wanted to interact with the world around you. And the amount of input you got from the NPCs was phenomenal. Crazy good, based on whether you were light or dark. It does look like 4 will also be on PC. It says um, simply to be titled Fable, and it's coming to PC and Xbox Series X. 3 came out, what, like 7 years ago? 8 years ago? I want to say it was like 2013, 2012 for three. Maybe earlier. The, 2010. Jesus. Fable 1 came out, what, 2004, 2003? The original Fable? Because it was on Xbox original. Yeah, 2004. And which, like, for, like, to, like, like, like you said, the, the amount of, like, a, like, shit that you can do to your character or to other characters in the first fable one game like that was super ahead of its time for 2004 like i loved doing multiple playthroughs and being like as evil as i can to get the horns the horns yeah 100 percent. but then you also got you do a good side right you get the halo you get the the aura the the light aura would shine off of you that's like one of the few games when like I did like an evil playthrough, like I didn't feel bad about being mean to the NPCs. <laughs> but it was literally just because like I'm trying to get these horns, bitch. Yeah, and like, then they would grow. It was progressive horns. You get the little the little spikes and then you would get bigger ones and then you get full on Hellboys, bro. And you look bad as fuck. It was, a, it was definitely a top tier game. A hundred percent. Glad that I didn't realize that it was gonna be on PC. I didn't so know a four was dropping. Yeah, but my biggest games it. this year release what uh, uh, definitely Wizarding World, hundred percent. I think I'm gonna try out Elden Ring. I think it looks quality, and there's been so much hype around it. Comes out what like Literally, April twenty fourth or something. Yeah, for like I enjoy the last couple of Lord of the like. Granted, they don't necessarily follow the lore of like actual Lord Elden of Ring is like Lord of the Rings game, is it? Uh, no, no, it's, it's like, like it. no, it's it's like the war the Middle Earth style. World George is very Mountain com- compatible. Martin's doing the story for it, but I don't think it's, it's yeah. I don't think it's finished. a uh, overlapping universe. 
I've been playing uh, Shadow of Mordor, not Shadow of Mordor, whatever the second one is. Something of Mordor. It, Middle Earth, yeah, Shadow of War. Shadow of uh, War. I've been playing that a lot, and it's honestly, it's got this thing called the Nemesis system, and it's probably like one of my favorite like mechanics of any game of like where. Sometimes it's a captain, sometimes it's just like a regular degular ass orc, but like if you kill someone, like there's a chance that they will literally come back and like hunt you down for killing them. Uh, and like then, like depending on how you killed him, like say you cut his arm off, he'll have like a hook arm instead. Or like you shot him in the head, he'll have a crazy fucked up head. So like not kill him, uh, but like defeated him. No, like. Well, if he's coming back for you, like with a hook arm, right? Well, so the way the way it works in Halo or in Halo. In this game, is your character Italian? Uh, he's infused with Calabrimbor's race. Calabrimbor's the guy that like created the rings. So he like you literally can't die. Like when you die, it's just kind of like being sent back to like, <clears throat> the beacons or whatever. Um, and so like if one of them kills you, then they'll get promoted in their army to like a new like to like a war chief or some shit. And then you have to like right now one of the dudes I'm like going to hunt down has killed me like three fucking times. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically it's like a five-star general in the orc yeah, army and like yeah like every time he's killed me he's gone up levels and like moved up ranks in the army and shit, of this shit i think it's just like you literally kill them but i think it's just kind of like mordor middle earth magic they came back it's like it's not all the time it's not every one that you kill comes and hunts you down it's just like i don't i'm not sure what initiates that sequence for them to do that but, like, they'll also, like, ambush you. You'll be, like, doing something else, and then you'll get, like, hit from behind. And they have, like, they all have line dialogues for, like, every time you come in counter with one of the captains. Like, they say some shit, and if, like, you've killed them before, they're like, Oh, you tried to kill me last time, but I'm gonna stick you with my blade, you pink-bellied scum, or some shit like that. Like Quality? It's pretty Quality cool. callback? Yeah, like, yeah. They have a lot of, uh guest actor or voice actors yeah. those lines <laughs> Kumail Nanjiani does the voice of one and they didn't even change his voice it's just Kumail Nanjiani's voice <laughs> on the work it's hilarious um, uh, and they have like some of them have like funnier names like one of the captains that I've killed a couple times his name is Douche but it's spelled D-U with a weird symbol S-H Dush but it's a, isn't it's Orlando Bloom game. coming back for the was he spotted in the trailer for Rings of Power? Maybe I don't. I hope not. Like he's not even alive. It's an elf, right? Yeah, like he's not. Oh. I don't think he's alive during the first because it's like the first stages of Middle Earth. I guess. I thought it was the story of the rings being created since it's called Rings of Power. I don't know because it's it's like. I think it's going to be the story leading up to the rings created rather than... Maybe like a seasonal thing. Maybe like season three, they create yeah. the rings or something. It's like, it's but so I thought a lot of shit I... happened before the ring. Like There was right. like a whole nother arch nemesis like, before the guy who even created the rings, right? Yeah, that's what, it, that's what it's about. So it's about Melkor's fall. And Melkor is... He is the Darth Sidious to Anakin Skywalker. Uh, with Sauron being Anakin Skywalker. Um, so, like, it's way before, like, I guess maybe the rings are going, because, like you said, it is called the Rings of Power, so, like, I've, I guess maybe it'll eventually lead up to that, but I do know, uh, in, like, the first teaser trailer or something like that they came out with, you see a specific tree, and it's, like, the Tree of Light or whatever that is, like, a pretty big power source to, like, just the world and the elves in general, and the way that ends, that ends with, like, uh, I don't know if it's Shelob's mom or not, but it ends with like a, a spider eventually like kills that tree, and that's kind of what I think brings on the Dark Ages, because like the it's like a tree of life essentially. I think, um, hmm. like all of it's just, it sounds like it's going to be heavily based on the Cimmerillion, maybe, and like I've never read that. I've tried to read it, but reading that is like reading a fucking encyclopedia. Like it's it's just all history, all backstory. There's not really any one concrete story to it. It's just a collection of all of the stories that like the Sherlock Holmes book wrote. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like it's it's essentially the Summerillion is like a 
like a glossary just for middle earth. It's just for complex. It's the same with the supposed to be a red like novel. I think like most people if they've read it, like they're very into literature. Like I could see like Anthony Musselman would be like the type of person to have like I would assume Anthony, tell me if you Yeah, shout out to Anthony or, Musselman. Um like he definitely seems like somebody that would have read and understood most of the Cimmerillion while like Greek to me. Awkward okay. silence. Well, I was. I'm also excited for the Wizarding World. That's really kind of like the only game I'm kind of looking for. Like, I am excited for the game Drew showed me the day before, where it's like a. The day, yeah. Uh, that's what's dropped. Quarterly? Three? Yeah, sometime, I think, third or fourth quarter. Yeah. And that looks cool. Like, I've never gotten into any of those games. Like, survival based like games? Uh, yeah, you never played The Last of Us? Or... Uh, I guess you were an Xbox dude. Well, you have tried to play The Last of Us a couple times. Like the first one, um, so good. On I haven't played the second like one yet. Four, yeah, I've tried to play it on like maybe four or five different occasions. Is it on PC? Like a, no, I think it's a PlayStation. I think it is as well. Um, I know for sure at least two to three of those times I was trying to do it on PlayStation's version of the Game Pass. And that one is just like all streaming based, and the internet that I that I had at the time kept getting me killed because it was like super laggy, and I was like, "Fuck this! This is not fun." Then I downloaded it, never even really got to like the real zombie shit. Like it was mostly still like the infighting with the new settlements or whatever you want to call them. And I stopped playing it because I was just like, "I just want to fight some fucking zombies. I don't give a shit about this like weird civil war." Um, and then I eventually went back to play it, but I was in the middle of a mission and I had no idea what my objective was. So just deleted it from my hard drive and never touched it again. Rip. It's unfortunate. I did buy my nephew the second one for Christmas. Didn't you all play Wildlands? Ghost Recon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. That game was game. So, the storyline was so captivating. And then the open world concept on the Ghost Recon, I feel like Wildlands did it super yeah. well. I think they did a really good job having an open world and the way the story progressed and how you could kind of choose which missions you want to do, how you destabilized the crime organization, I feel like was done really well. And then the storyline itself was just super captivating in my opinion. And the custom, custom ability of the um, guns, right, to kind of like choose the way you wanted to play the game, whether it be like long distance stealth or like rush in and attack and then you had your team and i can't i can't remember if it was the first but i think it was the first prominent one that had right so you had a team you're on a team of four and you had one right and you could unlock features where your team could line up on up to four people right you'd pick a guy and then you'd mark three other dudes for your teammates to kill right and then you'd do a one two three and you'd Drop them all. You can do that in uh, Shadow of War, too. It's, so Shadow of War, like, I would honestly say it's basically a Lord of the Rings Assassin's Creed game. Like, the play style is very similar to, like, stealth kills and, like, shit like that. Like, uh, part of the second one is you having the ability to, like, <clears throat> turn orcs to, like, your side. And, like, they become your followers. And you can have, like, if you summon them and you're creeping around, you can be like, hey, kill this person. So that way, if there's, like, two people or something like that, that you, you can get both of them without, like, raising the alarms or some shit. But back to your other point, um, I'm probably in the majority here, but I really enjoyed Halo Infinite's campaign. Like, the open world was kind of whatever. Um I feel like they probably could have fleshed that out more. It didn't feel like crazy necessary to the storyline for that game to be open world, but I did genuinely enjoy like the Halo campaign. Uh, like there are probably a couple things that I would would have changed here and there, but for the most part, like it was a good game. I liked it a lot. I feel like, like Halo hasn't done day. a bad campaign. I did not like Halo 5's campaign. Halo, I like what? Halo Five in general. Five. five. Oh, I didn't even. Know. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a Halo Five. I'm honest with you. Yeah, I was thinking one, two, three. Five, infinite. Yeah. I don't think I played Three's four or five. Like I think ODST was the last game I played for Halo before Infinite. No. Uh, Reach was Reach was oh, a real good story. Halo Three, 
one of my favorite missions in any game is the like final mission when you're driving on the warthogs with the like tiles falling or whatever you're just trying to survive to the other side yeah i remember doing that like with uh you'd like party up with all my friends and shit so it'd be like four of us trying to do that mission and like separate warthogs and shit racing each other to see who can finish one of my favorite games in my childhood i wish they would reboot is splinter cell the first like stealth warfare game like very like cia cia the company style game at the night like so many gadgets i feel like gadgets never really got the airtime they deserved before splinter cell right you had like trip wires and cams and motion sensors and thermal vision and all sorts of crazy stuff and you had to and I wouldn't, I wouldn't really call it open world, but just like it had multiple paths to the objective, right? So you could you can play it however you want. You to. could go through the main lobby, or you could like sneak through the vents, and you could go back and forth. Hitman did a really good job with that kind of shit too, right? Yeah. Like there were several ways to beat every map. Like you become the gardener, right, and then poison their food by like getting into the <laughs> kitchen, or you could like become an electrician and like hotwire the tub to electrocute them or like there were just so many ways to beat every single level in the hitman games i feel like that was super original um if if there was a ps a playstation game i could reboot i would definitely reboot sly cooper i fucking loved those games those were so cool. ratchet and clanks i enjoyed super thoroughly the original three I I ever played and I, i'm the original four yeah the original four uh jack yeah. and um god what's his name jack and dexter huh sagan jack and dexter yes those games were awesome as well i always get those two games, games confused Ratchet and Clank and they're that's fair. similar yeah they're cartoon animated games with two protagonists with their little tiny sidekicks yeah that was it Ratchet and clank that had like the most current reboot yes or- Mm-hmm. Very recent. There hasn't been a new Jack and Dexter game in a while. Jack and Dexter, I think, killed off Jack in the third really? game. Mom. I never played those. They I were never played Russian Clink mainly. They were super good. I feel like that would be a strong reboot if they could like, like, Dak and Jexter, <laughs> like their brothers or some shit. Damn, damn, Dak I'm and Jexter. I'm really looking forward to. I don't even know if it'll be on PC. But my brother's got an Xbox, so I know I'll get to play it at some point. But Skate 4, like, they officially, a while back, they announced it. Like, hey, we're finally doing this. Yeah. Like, I don't know why you guys fucking stopped. <clears throat> I, don't I don't have leisure game Best time game anymore. Day. Like, I had a lot of free time back in the day. And so, in my opinion, that's a leisure game, right? You just jump on. It's like GTA, right? You, like, after you beat the campaign, you could just leisurely jump on GTA. And be like, right. oh, I'm going to cause some fucking mayhem, right? Right. So like all of my game time now is doesn't get money. Yeah, hundred percent. But but now all my game time now is very if I tick of the tip of the spear, like I know what I want to accomplish. Like I don't have an infinite amount of time and so I want to do something that's very direct and uh almost like structured, as like crazy right. as that is to sound like I want to achieve something and I wanna I don't wanna just I don't wanna burn what time structure to my relaxation time. <laughs> Kyle I mean, that's kind of how I'm starting to feel, just because, like, as far as, like, competitive games go, like, there's only really a handful that I play. You also just started working for the first time in three and a half months, so. Like certain games were, like, I literally it went. It has been that long. I got beat has it not? one to zero in this. It like, has. I didn't realize. It's the computer. It's fucking. It has been pretty long. When'd you uh, storm off? When'd you join the Great Resignation? Facts. Before Thanksgiving. Hot minute. Dude, I remember he oh, texted. Yeah, it like right I can make it to Friendsgiving. Yeah. yeah. This is one of our first episodes. It's like episode mm-hmm. two. That damn turkey. Yeah. It's like around like November it's 14th good or something like that. Solid. Yeah, because like I wa- I wasn't gonna be able to go to Friendsgiving, <laughs> and then I was like, well, I quit. So, so I fuck it. <laughs> yeah, solid. It's the new died. job is like right down the street from the Kyle end. did die. That wasn't yeah, Friendsgiving. That was, uh, was it? New Year's. Yeah, because Burger was there. We we Burger was there for like three different things. We didn't do anything for Christmas. John was there. 
John wasn't there for my for my smoking episode. episode. <laughs> Your episode. Yeah, that was that was. Uh, like he a was there. I think it was. Yeah, no, Brent. John was definitely there. Was he? Yeah, no, Bird yeah, was he there. made it. He... They were both there. Yeah, John was. Oh yeah, he was because I remember playing stump with him for yeah. a little bit. I think he just left early. Yeah. Maybe he got there after I was already. He made up. it weird because and everybody left. like noticed, and then he was just like. Are you huh? And I was like, no, <laughs> why'd you do that? I got, got mad. You brought it to everybody's oh, attention. Man. I was like, that's the last thing he wants uh, to do. Hypothetically. <laughs> hypothetically, <laughs> hypothetically. Hypothetically, he would have then been very quiet. Um, what? Uh, he was I just think Friendsgiving so. was the last thing that we did together as a group prior to Eric's engagement party. We've done, we've done a lot of stuff to play Thanksgiving in now. Speaking of... Uh, what well, we need to we need to plan our openings. I told Natalie we would definitely do Multiverse of Madness as a couple's thing because she was super sad that she didn't get to go see Spider Man with me for the first time. We went together on my second time. Should we just take all of our significant others? Because my girlfriend was upset that I didn't immediately think of inviting her. Well, I immediately thought Even of it and then was like, "Well, the guys have already made it a guy thing." It wasn't that I didn't think about her whenever we were planning it. Apparently, I'm horrible because somebody who told me they're not into Marvel that much got mad at me. Oh, but I Natalie loves Marvel. Be like, so you should come to do that scenario. Marvel. Movies. If Natalie was like, she's like, I don't think Natalie wants to go see the Batman with us. Yeah, that could be a boys thing. Ten days, right? We're gonna see we it. probably shouldn't yeah. plan events on the podcast. Oh, wow. We should probably <laughs> stick to content. Yeah, somebody, somebody called me the other day. Joe, I think he also listens to the podcast, called me the other day and was like, hey, I got an extra ticket to Batman if you want to go see it. And so I was like, it's already out? Yeah, sure. No, it's just he bought, I guess he like pre-bought tickets or whatever. So Dude, tickets are already out? Tickets are already out. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't hear. I just, I thought. I only no, it's but he got out. some. He's got it yeah, like I that. They are. Got to connect. I, I guess. I don't know what he did to get them. But they are out? Or no? He got some. Yeah, yeah they're out. Oh, you know, we should cop some. So it comes out. Us three, us four. I mean, I'm down to see it a second time. I don't give a shit. Like it's the first thing from DC. I mean, are his tickets for opening night? Because that's when we would go so. see it. Because I want to say that he's. If they're available, like, yeah. I don't think it's going to be the same as Spider Man. Spider Man literally surpassed Avatar. Like it's literally the number one grossing movie of all time. I didn't know that. I knew it was getting close. It was very close, and then it passed it. And then, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I, Batman was, like, my first, I guess, favorite, like, superhero. Like, had DC been able to, like, keep the momentum that they had with, like, the Dark Knight trilogy and put that energy into, like, the newer movies, I think, like, I would still be more of a DC-leaning person, but the MCU is just, like... We gotta, you gotta think... So much better than the mass majority of shit that DC has put out since the Nolan trilogy. Well, you just gotta understand how many people they lost immediately. Like, anybody that's not us, right? Obviously, even I was turned off at it by the beginning, but I continued to give it an opportunity, right? So, uh, I'm referring to Robert Pattinson, of course, is what I'm referring to, right? But you gotta understand, there's gonna be a large, a large majority of people that heard that Robert Pattinson is in it and are not going to see it no matter what. In theaters, in theaters. Maybe they'll watch it on Netflix when it drops or uh, HBO Max, obviously, since it's a Warner Brothers movie, it's DC, yeah. right? My first thought whenever I heard that Robert Pattinson was taking over the mantle, I was like, I'm, this is going to be fucking terrible. But then I saw that Honestly, first show I, and I was yeah, like, 100%. this is going to be fucking good. But there's going to be so many people who don't even watch that trailer yeah. because it's like the, it'll pop up on their YouTube and be like, oh, that's the Robert Pattinson Batman. I'm not even going to click on that, right? It looks good, bro. Which, like, I, it does. I agree. Actor, I think it looks amazing. Like, I'm just saying that I don't no, think no, it could even have the saying, opportunity yeah. to be as crazy as Spider-Man was because there's going to be so many people that are not going to see it initially just based on the fact that it's Robert Pattinson. It's just like trendy I'm, to shit on DC, so of course I mean, nobody's going to. DC gonna makes do it real easy to shit on them, though. I disagree I mean, with it's that. Just I mean, to do it. I, 
I I have enjoyed a lot of the DC movies. I love Jason Same. Momoa as Aquaman. Like it was Same. a crazy like it was obviously a crazy CGI oh movie, God. but it's an under it's an underwater movie like but like that's that's what I'm talking about is okay, so that's a great example because I think Aquaman is a good movie, but it's also an okay movie, right? And that goes with Shazam and that goes with Shazam. in my personal opinion uh Harley, the Harley Quinn movie I thought was okay, it was good Birds enough. People forget how shitty the first two phases of fucking Marvel were. They weren't that great. What made Marvel good, or like where it's at now, is phase three. Like if I, I'm not going to go into detail, but if I yeah, went into phase one and phase two, most of them are filled with meh movies. Besides like Iron Man and Iron Man. Phase three is like where everything pops off. And okay, uh, uh, isn't Winter Soldier in like the first phase? Phase three. Phase three. Uh, but the thing about uh, they were the first person to Guardians do of the, the Galaxy. The heavy connectivity, right? Agreed, yeah. And that's what yeah, drew but, you to phase one, two, and now it's just a copycat. But I agree yeah. with you hundred percent. I think that DC has a lot going on for it right now. The I the mashup a, Superman yeah. trailer that they had with like Black Adam Flash and uh Mm-hmm. Batman, I think, was super well done, and it made me excited to see all four of those movies that are coming out this year. Yeah. Like, I'm excited to see every single one. I'll probably see them in theaters. I'm excited for Batman. I don't like The Rock as Black Adam. Like, Shazam is one of my favorite DC characters, and then, like, Black Adam is one of his, like, anti like one of his like his arch nemesis type shit so like knowing that the rock is going to be in it automatically tells me like this is going to be a super mid-tier action movie that's going to have a bunch of terrible dialogue in it and i don't care like with the flashpoint going (laughs) back and like retconning and getting rid of superman and batman and replacing them with like superwoman and be the second person they're replacing him with it's just like man of steel did not care for i liked man of steel a lot I thought man of steel was good i thought it was yeah. really good man vs superman was, i love batman v superman i loved it I, I, th- I think it's just trendy it's just trendy yeah, to shit trendy. on it because like a bunch of place. normies want to hop on the train of being like dc versus marvel dc versus marvel so they already were introduced marvel super Literally, early like batman on tattoo like i love batman batman is my like favorite i never said nathan i never because... said nathan i said normies i'm sorry you identify you as didn't a like normie, ben but... batman like I, I loved Ben Affleck as Batman. I just did not like the like the arc that they went through. I think that, that the like, I didn't like the fact that he killed like, a bunch. Yeah, of Yeah, I was gonna say like he straight up just starts killing people. Then there's the stupid. Your mom's name is Martha. The Martha too? thing is the did only negative thing friends? that I had about. There's him. no negative with that. Just fucking whatever. Zack Snyder is a horrible director and storyteller. That's the problem. The Martha thing makes sense, but you have to be like, like I liked the Snyder. Snyder, Snyder, Snyder cut. Yeah, honestly, cut seems really like an good. entirely Guess. different movie like justice league sucked it's just like i will say admittedly we've probably been spoiled with marvel doing their shit in phases and having an interconnect when it's just like dc why don't you do the same thing and so because like it seems like they're kind of trying to but none of their movies do well enough at the box office for them to fully commit to which anything. is why they have to do so things like, with like the rock you got to understand that that's the I'm things saying. that like, you hate about it are constant- those the things that they're trying to fix they're they're fixing it with the rock why the rock is literally like, i would say the top 10 on everybody's list in the he world is one of the as well known actor and, and, and you know how many sure, people are gonna go not, see the movie just because just the rock, the rock. Is, you know yeah, how many people exactly. would see the they're going Adam, to see the rock not dwayne johnson which is what you have to do we're going to, to see dwayne johnson money as a movie right you can't be mad at them name name him what what's your favorite the rock movie name a movie with i like all the rock first of all i like all the rock movies i thought he was great as hobbs and fast and the furious right what was that movie um bro that's like him in the truck the hard the hard something the walk fuck he was great in red he did two movies that were the fucking same walk walk hard hard, the dewey cox story cox movie yeah uh Walk the walking line, tall. Walk the, uh, walking, walking tall, tall. Like and then that. there was another movie that he did around the same time that literally is both movies are him standing on the cover with a two by four. I don't like, know why you just hate The Rock so much. I'm saying because he's a rock. bad actor. Like he doesn't bring <sighs> the only thing he brings to movies is The Rock, and we don't get The Rock. We get Dwayne Johnson. 
Honestly, hey, maybe Black Adam will be the peacemaker for you because I didn't think John Cena could act until I watched Peacemaker, and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, like I maybe kind of I like I have been I was thoroughly surprised with like how much I enjoyed John right. Cena and Peacemaker. Do us a favor, the then stop shitting on the rock I until you seen... see <laughs> him as Black Adam. Thanks so much, Black Adam. Kisses. And like, if it like, it's just gonna I don't know. Like, if they bring in, well, Shazam, you didn't like the Jumanji movies? Those were like, great. No. No. Also, I also I don't, don't really think Kevin Hart's a great actor. Like I don't particularly. Oh my god! Not in February. Nathan, Nathan hates Nathan. everything. Nathan, Nathan no, hates it's just everything. Dare, I've gotten to a point where I just fucking I like hey, I love hey. Ryan Reynolds, but I Ryan Reynolds, The Rock. Uh, Kevin no shot your dog and Ryan Riddle. Play. I'm leaving. Yeah. Bro, We're Ryan Reynolds is just Deadpool in every, every movie that, that he's in. Podcast. To be the fourth podcast member. <laughs> no, Ryan answer. Reynolds is attractive Rip. and he's funny, but every movie that he's in just feels like a watered down version of Deadpool in a different movie. Like he's always that sarcastic dude. That's, like, he, that's him. Sarcastic. You gotta understand those the, things. You it, can't just only love actors who have range. Actors that do one thing well, there's nothing fucking wrong with that, Nathan. Say, Jason Statham? Like, there's nothing Tom wrong Cruise. with one guy that I, acts Liam Neeson. one I part well. I don't fuck with Tom Cruise, but I'm not going to get into that because, like, that's a whole, like, real consequence kind of conversation <laughs> that I don't... Tom Cruise, uh, I, don't, I don't really get behind There's that. no real consequence behind that. I mean, I don't like him as a human, uh, no, but I'd like no, every so the single reasons, movie like, if that I were to be, If I were to be vocal about the reasons that I do like him, there would be, like, real consequences. I believe in Scientology. Right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, your, your problem with all these people is that... Wait, is that no, true? Yeah, is that what I, you're saying? Yes, if if he said that like, multiple times before. No, if I don't like like an actor as a person, I'm probably not. No, no, no. I'm not talking about actor as a person. That's not what I'm talking about. He doesn't like them because they don't do multiple. Like Robert Downey Jr. does multiple types of roles, right? He's not just like an action star. So Nathan's problem with these, everybody that we've just mentioned, is because they don't have a a, a wide range no, of person. Not Name one actor you like that, that plays the same role every time. The same the, the the same type of role. I like, I like Will Ferrell. I, I think, think Will people who get typecasted are good actors funny. because they accurately play the same character over 100%. and over again, and movies get made for just, them. It just it's to me it seems very like repetitive. If, like if there's no different, if you can't differentiate this actor's character between multiple different movies, then like I don't give a shit. Like I don't want to watch it. That's, That's such like a... saying Shaq's not a good athlete because he had a horrible free throw lo- uh, shot. That's like saying you won't watch Steph Curry just because you know it's going to go in. Yeah. Well, no, I know he's going to shoot the ball. He's going to play so... basketball. <laughs> Steph Curry's not it? playing in the Rangers this week? Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck. No, that's a completely different. Steph Curry's not going. You're saying they can not, only. That's not they're only good at one stuff. thing, yeah, and that makes them not good at their job. It's just, yeah, I get, it's not even so much that they're only good at one thing. It's just like, it's, like I said, it's super repetitive. It gets old. It gets stale. It, it doesn't get going. old, though. I, like, that's just a you thing. Yeah, I, I, I get what you, I get what you are saying. It makes sense. It would get old. But then you have certain actors where you look like, oh, that's a blah, blah, blah movie. I'm going to go see that. Like back in the 80s, oh, that's a Schwarzenegger Schwarzenegger, <laughs> Schwarzenegger film. I'm going to go to that movie and watch Schwarzenegger. That's a Stallone film. I'm going to go see that Stallone film. I enjoyed the Rock movies up until probably like a couple of years ago when I was just like, this this idea of this character is just super played out at this point. I just feel like you hated the, the drawn outness of Fast and Furious and you're taking out on The Rock. No, I the Fast and the Furious is definitely like one of my guilty pleasure like franchises. I haven't seen the most recent one where they go to space because like that is kind of where I was just like, all right. Like, so what are the Rock sure movies? Like, First of all, why didn't you like Jumaji? First of all, that's not even like that's not even the role he plays. He did. If you want to talk about breadth of ability as an actor, he did an amazing job looking like that skinny dude, acting yeah. out, being the personality of that skinny dude while actually being the giant motherfucker that's The Rock. He did a great job. Like whether you disliked the storyline or the other people that were cast or the way that they did Jumanji different and made it a comedy and not a drama. Like Rampage, trash. Okay, first of all, Rampage was trash. I'll give you Rampage. Say say the second one. 
San Andreas with the fucking the, the movie about the fucking earthquake. Hard trash. Okay, pro- like, yeah, agreed. I mean, steaming pile of shit. Like there are occasionally, yeah, uh, The Rock. I enjoy some of his movies, but overall, okay. Well, besides, like, right, I know that I, I, it's if I can tell what he's gonna be going into it. But also, I don't see that movie, so I have never seen San Andreas. I've never seen Rampage, and I've never seen uh, Skyscraper. Right? Obviously, those are trash movies. You can tell from the beginning, right? But like, you're focusing on the negative, right? Name, uh, continue naming those movies. movies. Are people with high, low like, nobody IQ. is saying The Rock is a great actor because like, he was in Skyscraper. Nobody is saying that Skyscraper <laughs> is the blockbuster. No one's hitter. saying he's a great actor because he was in. Fast in the fucking furious. You know, but they're saying he's a great actor because he was in Jumanji because he played that role genuinely well. The way that he pretended to be somebody else pretending to be him was he's done dude well. This dude playing another dude. <laughs> what do you mean, you people? Do you like Jackie Chan movies? I feel like it's been so long. Oh, since this is the podcast, the podcast everybody. We'll talk to you. We'll see you next week. Oh, I was going to say, we'll like, see I do, but it's week. been so long since I've seen a Jackie Chan. You didn't movie. see uh, like, uh, Impos- uh, yeah, Foreigner? Like, the Foreigner? I want to no, see The Foreigner. I wanted so I to see seen it. it. I was pretty hyped about it, but I also, like. Hate Jackie Chan. Nathan hates Jackie Chan. No, I love kung fu movies, is what I was going to say. It's like, I really enjoy kung fu movies. I don't know, enjoy the type of movie that's the same. Like, I didn't enjoy the fucking Jackie Chan movie where he was a babysitter. That movie fucking sucked. A babysitter? Kung fu movies share basically the same fucking plot line, Nathan. You were taking your story, and you're riddling it with fucking holes, Nathan just loves to hate hate things that other people like. I understand that kung fu movies are a certain... No, I understand that kung fu movies are, like, very similar to each other. Oh, okay, but you still enjoy them, though. I No, I don't enjoy... I, I don't single out specific actors. I probably could name... Two kung fu like do you, movie stars so, that are alive. So, so the dude that plays like Man and Jumanji. Jackie Chan. The new Jumanji. The, the chemistry between the <laughs> the, the most the the th- uh, the thing that I like most about Jumanji is Jack Black, and he's a character that he plays pretty similar characters in a lot of his movies. I fucking love Jack Black. He's a national treasure. So that all they so you, you can like only like white, a character, but not if they're sort of brown. Rip. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. We've been Spacebar Podcast. Hashtag your favorite podcast. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Hey, guys. Welcome to Spacebar Podcast. This is episode, thir- episode 13. Also, see you guys at episode 14. Adios. <laughs> we did no intro. Yeah.